invisible and you can see it yes visible? yes okay. Vimal, your screen has gone. We are only seeing you now. That's fine. This is good, Bimal. Share the uh, presentation, please. Okay. Yeah. We are there. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Anji. Sorry for this small glitch. Uh, thanks, everybody, and uh, welcome uh, to this uh, PBC webinar. Uh, at Bento Coach, our mission is to make coaching convenient. So today's uh, webinar is actually a small subset of our uh, career management coaching. Uh, intervention that we provide for one is to one coaching conversation. Uh, depending on where you are, what your aspirations are, our coaching interventions are uh, curated according to that. Starting from people who are fresh graduates or who have one to two years experience and want to be sure about their careers, to individuals who are in the middle of their careers, uh, they want to grow and explore. Uh, what can make them grow is the lateral career rank. What skill sets do they need? And also for people who want to explore and how can they take charge of their careers. Now, here I would uh, like to ask, uh, and you can put down your comment in the chat box. Uh, in a metaphor of a car, uh, where is your career today? Is it a sports car? Is it a family car? Or is it an SUV? You can put down that comment in the chat box, please. And then you can prompt as some answers come, as some chats do come. I'm seeing uh, a mixture of family using public mm -hmm. transport. Okay. Um, okay SUV, nice. okay. walking. Oh, uh -huh. right. Good, good. So, so it's a roadmap to your career. So this analogy is primarily to uh, drive the analogy is that, you know, so uh, we are all on a specific career track. Now, the, if you're driving a sports car, it's primarily about growth, that you're moving at a very fast speed. It's all about speed. What can I do more? Where can I uh, you know, go next? The specific question that you're always asking yourself is that, is this the right move? What do I do next? Do I have the right move? How can I get you know, even uh, faster? So that, that's what a sports car is all about. And then there are times, you know, there are stages in our life where- Could like you be a little car. louder, please? Could you be a okay. little louder? Thank you. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So like if I'm in a family car, the idea is about safety. I don't want to make any sudden moves. I want to, you know, I have a family to support. Is that okay for me? Because I don't want to the person who gets into a startup or something or an entrepreneurship. I want safety first. So you know, that is one part of the career, which is like having safety first. And then there's an SUV model, which is like a hybrid model where some element of sports car are there, some element of a family car is there. So when we look at our career, we all go through uh, different stages in our career, right? 
uh, we have a growth stage you know we start out we are learning new things and then we have you know stages where we are plateauing and then we take a next plunge and then we have you know period where we say okay let's let's have safety first however uh, you know there are uh, there are cases where everything is going all right and suddenly you know there is something which happens which is out of your control um these are circumstances that don't allow uh, me to you know actually plan there is a road rage uh, or the road is in inappropriate it is broken somewhere and and the car has to be actually taken off road so that is where the uh, transition comes in request people to mute their mic please so you know uh, uh, this pandemic is is an example of that where you know something that was not planned has happened it was not expected so now what 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 does that mean if i lost my job or i was furloughed uh, or my uh, company did not have enough capacity to have 100% of workforce uh, how can i get back to work uh, how can in, i i be in a situation where actually i and what do i do to reach there so that is uh, what uh, we will be talking about the the transition part of the career uh, where we are actually wanting to get back to work so in in today's session it's all about transition and how do i get back on track so it's actually a 3 to 4 session of one is to one uh, coaching intervention that we provide for people who are in the transition in today's session therefore i would be delivering a condensed version of these 3 to 4 sessions and i hope it would add value to the Uh, time that you're investing. Uh, it takes into account the, my own experience of transition, and also dealing with you know almost 50, 60 uh, individuals whom I have transitioned successfully, and and this comprising of sectors like FMCG, insurance, automobile, uh, banking, uh, people at almost all levels uh, in the organization. And I always felt the need of a structured approach to this whole transition process. Uh, so this is what we will do today. We will take stock of the current realities. uh we will plan and prepare and having done this uh, we see how do we step into the uh, success how do we uh, how do we go forward from there so uh, so for you know people who are out of the job and need uh, the need of the hour is to remain focused it's an opportunity to take stock of things perhaps reflect on the journey and prepare the road to move forward Uh, use this opportunity also perhaps to pause and maybe do things which uh, we always wanted to do but never had the time maybe uh, one can also think over as to what else other than a job is a possibility or which sectors other than what i have already been working in are possible or what different job roles are possible uh, other than the jobs that i was doing uh, uh, currently and it's necessary uh, to be in the right frame of of mind and 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 process uh, during this uh, transition now this is also the time to have confidence in self to recall all the successes that you had till now all that has worked for for now because uh, the negative bit bias is essentially uh, which is a phenomena in, in, in human being that have a tendency that if you know everything is going all right but one thing goes wrong we focus everything all our energy is they start channelizing in what is what so not on the ten things that are are are, are going right so we have to uh, retrain our brain uh, to kind of say i need to take balanced view, view of things and uh, so if i were to ask you you know what is what are the things that you would analyze uh, when you are in transition and this again i would request people to put some comment in the chat box uh, what would you analyze uh, when you are in a transition what are things that are important to you the first question is asked by myself how will i pay my bills okay great that that's that's there yes. that's that's nice that comes to my mind as well yeah okay so how will i grow and develop how would i grow and develop on the foot Right. So, in this context, it is prudent to have a look at the current uh, assets and liabilities, so to say. Uh, so, analyze your current liabilities. Uh, list all the expenses and the frequencies at which you do this. Identify uh, what are the essential expenses. 
um, assess uh, if there are any expenses that can be deferred. And the most important aspect perhaps is that we all do investments and our investments are a function of time depending on where we are in our, in our careers. So when there's a steady flow of income, we tend to put a lot of money or a large part of our money in equities or markets or mutual funds, which are uh, risky, but very, uh, which gives very high returns. So it's, 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 a, it's a case where you revisit your investment portfolio and say, okay, I pull out some money uh, right now and in, uh, put it into a debt instrument or I put it into a fixed deposit. My money would be safe. And again, when I get back to my tracks, they get back on work and again, the steady flow can start. I actually, you know, um, revisit again and redefine my portfolio back. It's also good to have uh, understanding of a current asset. And when I say assets, not only the physical assets, but also the assets like uh, uh, perhaps your family or your friends who can uh, support you, leverage that support network. Uh, in fact, in many of the uh, uh, of the uh, conversation that we have with our our uh, you know individual clients. They, they tend to you know, come up with this very strong support network, which is a family. And, and when I ask them, you know, how does the family feel? So they say, you know, the family is absolutely supportive. They say, don't worry, you know, we have this, we can do this much. We have a house, we have ourselves to support. Take your time, get into a, into a job, which is good. Which is good to speak to people uh, who you know you can go and talk to. Uh, who can support you in, in a fashion, not only give you, uh, you know, sympathy and, and talk about it, but they will actually tell you as to what can be the right frame of mind. Where do you want to go next? How can you go about doing that? And it is always, uh, you know, good to talk to somebody who is unbiased, who will give you a very unbiased view of things as to what you could have done, now what you can do, uh, things like that. So it's extremely, extremely critical to have uh, analysis of your current assets. So moving forward, uh, having done the reality check, uh, it's time to actually plan, prepare, and execute. So for people who are familiar with this, you know, there may there are some people who are from the manufacturing, uh, you know, background, quality background, what we call as the PDCA cycle, plan, do, check, act. So now you can draw an analogy to this approach. Treat it like a project. Treat your job search as a project. It, it just cannot happen that you just start sending resume uh, to some people or sending it to friends and you know connect or sending it to portals. That, that's not the only way to do it. You have to have a, uh, you know, a right kind of project around it so that you plan, you prepare, and then you execute. Now here, uh, if I were to ask you, uh, you know, what would you plan, uh, how, or, or rather, how would you plan your next job search? So I would again uh, request uh, some comments here so that we understand uh, what's going on in your mind and uh, channelize uh, your your job search strategy. I've put in the first comment, but we are going to wait for people to start typing in. The first comment is, "Call my network." Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wait for a few more seconds for people to respond to that. What do you plan when you start your next job search? I see one Difficult more to use um, social media to find jobs at senior level. So networks probably the key. Oh, okay. okay. Get a coach. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's good. That's wonderful. Yeah, you should get a coach for help. For sure, it helps. It helps. Right. Now, uh, I will speak of a process, uh, which is generally believed is a, is a time bound uh, process of two to three months. Uh, and when I ask this question to people as to what is your job strategy, how do you go about finding a job, the most common answer that people give is applying to all the job portals and giving my resumes to all my friends and family. I mean, that's a general answer that I get. And by network, they normally would mean friends and colleagues as a network. In this seminar, in this webinar today, we're going to talk what is a network at some point of time later in the webinar and how do you live with that webinar other than your friends and colleagues. 
So this is not a strategy when people say I will give my you know resume to uh, my colleagues or, or, or friends or put it on the job portal. It, 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 is, it is one part of the process, but the best thing is that you have to plan it properly. And that's the plan phase. You have to really ask yourself, what problems do you want to solve? Because people want people, any employer wants people who can solve it. To go. go to maybe I work in a multinational. What I want to go to Indian house now, or the reverse. You know, I have been working for the Indian company. What I want to go to multinational. Which sectors uh, would suit me? And then you start putting a list of you know companies and sectors, and then you come up almost like you know you have a whole list of just hundred companies, a hundred things that you that you can do. And now you have to you know put it in a funnel and channelize and say okay, out of these. So many, uh, you know, shortly that I've done, I need to focus on this 25. This is again uh, a part of our process when we do one to one coaching with individuals. So one session uh, goes into our, uh, you know, finding out the jobs, the strategy uh, for individuals. Okay. Now in the phase, uh, we have actually made our job the strategy. Then the next thing is, as people said, then we'll go to network. The fact is that only 10 to 15% of the jobs are actually visible in the open market. 85 or maybe 90% of the jobs are not visible. And that is even more true for people who are looking for middle to senior level leadership. These jobs do not exist in the open market. They won't go to any, uh, any job portal like Nokri or Shine or Monster, et cetera, et cetera. They remain uh, hidden. They are mostly Build up using networking either through internal job posting or through networking where people know each other. And that is why your approach has to be uh, in three directions. Uh, one, yeah, certainly apply to job portals if there are jobs which are being advertised. Uh, reaching out to consultant, job consultant, yes, that is one part of your job search, uh, you know, process. But reaching out to prospective employers which are hidden is something which is extremely critical. It has to be outbound when you are reaching out to people and inbound where people are seeing you and tapping you for the uh, you know, possibility of a job in their organization. And that is where uh, we help people in doing that. How do, you reach, how do you create a visibility so that people reach out to you? Now here, uh, we need some tools so that uh, you know, we create our visibility. So what do you think are, are the are two tools which are extremely critical uh, when you prepare for going out to a, a job search market? What are your views on that? Again, I would request people to be you know, typing it on the chat box. What are the two tools that are needed uh, when you go out for a job search? I think resume is um, is one of the thoughts. Yeah, resume is one for sure. Yes. What can be the next one? Presenting yourself, questions. LinkedIn, mm -hmm. networking. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So great answers. Yes, for sure. Resume is one, and that is where the Shortlist the examples that demonstrate your skills. So resume is what creates. Sorry, come again, Anjani. Shortlist, Anjani can't hear you. shortlist examples that demonstrate your skills. Ah, okay, wonderful, wonderful. So let's talk about the first tool that is resume. For sure, I mean resume is something which you, which you need for sure. Now, resume is what creates the visibility. Who are you? It's the, it's the most important piece of document when you are reaching out to a job. Now, any person uh, who is seeing any resume normally will spend, and that I'm also speaking from my own uh, experience of having recruited so many people in my career, spends about 15 to 20, minutes, 20 seconds uh, before selecting or rejecting a particular resume for further process. So, so your resume has to be such that you know it, it 
the moment it is seen by some individual, it gets that kind of traction that he actually uh, you know, puts it for further processing. So the question is, how much do I write? What do I write? And how can I write so much so that you know of my experience in, in a such a short document? Now, what do you think uh, could be a optimal size of a resume? How many pages do you think a resume uh, should be made up of? What's your views? Again, you know, please put it in the chat box. What can be an optimal size? LinkedIn articles that demonstrate your ability or will it be treated as clear case looking for a job? One or two pages is... Um, mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to put that as a question for later. Um, mm -hmm. There's a comment here about LinkedIn articles. I'll put that as a question for later. Right, right. We'll, we'll take it in the q &A. Okay. So now coming to this optimal size of, of, of a resume is, is actually two page. That, that's the mandate these days. So I, I give an example. I was, you know, talking to a CFO a few days back on a one-to-one -one coaching and he had a four pages. And he was, you know, holding that CFO position in a good company for a pretty long time. The discussion went on for almost half an hour and he was sort of trying to convince me why it should be four pages. And I kept on telling him why it should be two pages. And after 30 minutes, I said, look, you know, if you want to go ahead and put a four page resume, it's your call. I mean, that's not what people want. And if you don't succeed in, in getting a call, then it's totally your your problem, but it's a two page. So he said, you know, how can I put almost 15, 20 years of my experience in two pages? Now that's a valid question. That is something which is extremely valid. So the thing is that you need to put in two pages and hence what you need to write is not what you do, but what you have achieved. Normally what people keep on doing is that if they are say a plant head or a QC head or a CFO, they keep on writing what they do. Um, I do audits, I do this, I, I do you know, internal audits, I do uh, cost controls. Now, these are job descriptions. When you're applying to people uh, or, or organization, they know what this job means. So if you're applying for a CFO in any other organization or for that matter, planted in any other organization, those people know what the job responsibility of a CFO or a plant manager or a plant director is. You don't need to write them. What you need to write is that in the each of the job that you have been doing, what have been your achievements? And that is the most crucial part. So your resume has to be based only on achievements, numbers. What did you do? What did it achieve? How did it benefit the organization in each of the jobs? And you cannot put equal weightage to all the jobs that you've been for a person who has been, say, 15 years in the in, in industry or 15 years, 20 years in a career. You can't put all five or six jobs that he has done and, and given the equal weightage. The last job that you did, uh, that should find the maximum weightage on the resume because the skills and the experience that you brought in in that job is transferable at the earliest, is easily transferable. And that is what people look at that. But what you certainly need to write about is the magnitude of the job in each of these roles that you've done. And when you say magnitude, it means what was the size of the team that you handled? What was the revenue that you handled? Uh, or if it can give the scale with respect to the geographical uh, area that you handled. So maybe if the company has four plants, you can write, I was handling all the four plants, or I was handling, you know, North region, or if you need sales, you can say I was handling, you know, North uh, part of India, or my team size was say, 2,000 people indirectly and 20 people directly. So the magnitude of the job has to come in because that gives as to how big your job was. And you can also mention about the company in one or two lines as to what is the turnover of that company. So great big companies like Hindustan Lever or say for that matter, PepsiCo, Coke, they are you know, billion dollar companies, multi-billion dollar companies worldwide. But within India, what is their contribution if you're, if you're writing the Indian perspective? That has to be brought in. Or automobile companies, so for that matter, you know, Suzuki of the world or the Harley Division of the world or you know, Mercedes, all these companies, you have to then give a uh, uh, understanding of the hobby, your job. Is. And avoid statements like, I'm a team player, I am motivated. Uh, we have to be very, very specific. I mean, these things don't, it's like a cut page to put, pick up from somewhere and put it there. So be very specific when you write what you mean by team player. Uh, what did you do? What did you demonstrate? Uh, when you say, I love handling challenging assignments. So rather than saying that, you demonstrate what challenging assignment you need to handle on every zone. So be specific. 
there is also something called the application uh, you know tracking uh, system which is called the ATS these days most companies and most recruiters these days have this ai based tool where the resume actually first goes through the ats and the ats decides whether it is fit enough to go to the next level 99% of the resumes are liable to not comply with the ats and are likely to be rejected but what the ats does it it sort of first sees the format whether the format is in the ats format or not and it also searches for the keywords with the job description has so if your resume does not have the keywords in the job description has it is very likely that your resume will not pass the ATS test so in essence every single resume that you are sending out it should be specifically customized to the job that you are wanting to seek and hence one master resume and you keep on doing apply 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 to the work every single resume has to be thought through it has to be customized and then it has to be uh, sent accordingly so this is again uh, you know second session that we do with our one to one client where we make the resume create the content create the the search words so that they are able to pass through the ats now coming to the second tool now what is the second tool this was the first tool in the preparation phase you have decided the strategy how to go where to go what are the companies the first tool in the preparation is the resume now there is a second important tool which is very critical to go about in the in the job search strategy for that i think some people did answer earlier um, they said linkedin linkedin and... as one of the tool right yes. right yeah okay yeah so indeed linkedin linkedin is certainly a very important part of the tool that you have now the question that arises is uh, and many people ask this question that how is a linkedin profile different than a resume and that's a very interesting question many people do cut paste their resume into linkedin uh, that is not to be done for sure because linkedin is linkedin and and you have to be so what's the difference the difference is the resume is a document where you market yourself by enlisting your your value addition areas along with your skills and capabilities it is to communicate you know why you are the best fit for the job and that's why every resume is different linkedin profiles are not different can't be one changing linkedin profile it has to be one um, and resumes are supposed to be you know uh, very to the point uh, uh, it is not a place to build your personal narrative uh, whereas linkedin on the other hand uh, enjoys the more relaxed tone Uh, in your profile you can provide more details and deeper uh, context for the achievements uh, you can put your profile photo in fact profile photo has to be there in linkedin that can that mandate there is a background uh, behind the profile photo which speaks about yourself uh, and in fact we had one workshop where we uh, talked about how to make a profile photo why profile photo is important Uh, we have that recording on the youtube we can you know share that recording for people who are interested in understanding uh, what it is all about why a linkedin profile is so important and recruiters often gain a a deeper look into your personality if you have written your linkedin profile well so what i'm trying to tell you is that you know linkedin profile optimization is like a search engine optimization if somebody is looking say for example a quality manager or a quality head for an organization and it puts it in the google search engine does your name come up if you written your linkedin profile well it will come up for sure it's like the process of converting your linkedin profile into a funnel uh, uh, like you would you know uh, create your own website so use your linkedin profile uh, like your website in, in these days in your resume you do want to put a linkage to your uh, profile so that uh, you know it's it's people can click it and see it's also a place uh, where your thought leadership is visible so linkedin is not only about you know being there it is about what is your thought leadership how are you engaging with people what are the articles that you are posting what kind of uh, interaction that you are having with people who are the people in your network so that gives an idea about your personality and so the outcome is that you know you get found on on the search uh, you convert your audience using a, a call to action and it, again it's it's, a, it's an art that you need to learn how do you convert your audience using a call to action on a profile 
and other than that you know you can use linkedin for adding testimonials asking people for endorsement which is just not possible on a resume so resume is having one purpose and linkedin profile has a very different purpose the the other part of linkedin which we'll talk about in, in networking is linkedin has to be used as a very strong and important tool uh, for networking and we'll see how we can uh, do that so so here you're engaging with people right and we spoke when we talk, talked about you know that 85% 90% of the job in the hidden market then linkedin comes into picture that if you want to reach out to say a talent acquisition manager of a company how can you use linkedin to reach out to him? or if you are a very senior person you want to reach out to the ceo of the company how can you use linkedin to tap to the ceo of, of that company right okay so now having made the resume and having made the linkedin profile it's time to execute so in the plan prepare and execute model we are now trying to execute this whole thing so how do you reach out to people and and why should people reach out to you uh, this is where uh, the branding uh, plays an important role uh, so so what do you think uh, how does a brand come into picture in all this you know job search strategy connection what's what's your uh, thought on on branding yourself request again some comments in the chat what is your thought of branding yourself in the whole process of job search display your credibility display your credibility yes for sure i see some more chat coming in showcase your strength showcase, showcase. your commitment okay okay we should so, identify uh, attributes that are important for the job we are seeking mm -hmm. okay so some of it is true uh, commitment i'm not too sure how you can do that by branding but yeah it can be done through various other possibilities uh, so branding plays an important role most people they hate promoting that so they say okay my work will speak about myself i mean i i i do so much of work people will see it and i get branded but the attention spans actually are becoming very small your first impressions count Uh, people who invest time and effort in building their personal brand gain significantly in their careers. You know, it's like, and and I like this quote. You know that if you're not a brand, you're a commodity. Uh, it's a very important, uh, very strong statement. And a typical example is like you know these days people say, "Have you Googled?" Now, there's there no word called Google. I mean, it's a search engine. but the brand is so strong that anything and everything to do with search today is getting connected to google or you say you know have you xerox now xerox is again a brand it is it, it's not a, it's actually a machine which has a brand name of xerox so that is how you know these brands come into picture and people start seeing you as a brand with respect to your job or your domain and that work and that's true within the organization and it's also to when you reach out outside the organization so how do you do this what what the process uh, to follow the, the important thing is identify yourself who i am and it's always good uh, if you can you know by basis these certain question that to ask yourself uh, create your own personal brand statement and these brand statement uh, can be there in various forum i mean it can be on your linkedin profile as well like for example Say for example, if I was a, a production guy, you know, I I have been a production guy, so I can write, you know, I help uh, production facilities streamline their processes so that they can minimize waste and boost their profits, or I develop sustainable uh, business model and marketing strategies to fuel small business growth. Depending what I do and depending what my target audience is going to be, uh, who is going to recognize me as a brand, I use my brand statement. So. it is good to have a brand statement for yourself and uh, when you do that uh, remain consistent your branding has takes time it's not that it will get done in a day or or week it takes some time to build because you have to increase your visibility 
And the secret to you know successful personal branding uh, building is, is consistency. Consistently uh, publish new content on the LinkedIn and publish great content so that you engage with people. Now, find out opportunities you can, you can speak. Uh, get hold of some webinar. Get hold of some public platforms like you know, you know even in your own organization uh, because that is the forum where you actually showcase your thought thought leadership and network as much as possible you can with people outside your comfort zone. I mean, normally people tend to interact with people who are similar or like-minded. But when you go outside your comfort zone, you actually need to interact and that is where the branding starts taking place and the shape starts taking place. And you will be you know, rewarded with a unique uh, personal brand and that will go slowly but very steadily and make you a leading authority in the niche uh, that you want to you know, service. And your personal brand also allows you to say something about your expertise and what makes you unique. So if you give people an understanding about what you can do so that they will be able to understand how you can be of benefit to them. So networking, personal branding is all about telling people as to how I can be you know, benefit, uh, benefiting. What problems do I solve? You know, going back a little to the human understanding. What problems do I solve? Because people hire you because you solve problems because you are beneficial to them. And that also comes when you brand yourself. Now, having done your branding, having done your LinkedIn, having done your resume, now is the time that you start networking. And we spoke about uh, networking a little while back and we also were discussing how to approach your job with strategy. Uh, and we also said that LinkedIn is one strong platform for networking. Eventually, uh, everything gets done through people. I mean, we need people in our lives to get things done. And we need the right people at the right, right moment. So networking is all about getting connected regularly and not when you actually need them. And, and I realized that even during the pandemic situation, you know, when people are struggling to get admission to hospitals, people are struggling to get uh, oxygen cylinders, this whole networking came into, you know, picture. I mean, I, I had to reach out with people who, who are no more, you know, one-to-one -one connected with me on a regular basis, but they were connected to me on some frequency. And I reached out to them, you know, the, with whom I worked on 15 years back, and I really got some good, uh, good help. Uh, they really helped me around the time. So you need to be networked consistently, regularly, not only when you need them. And when you are networking, the, the most important thing is you show the intent. You engage with them. Uh, show genuine interest in people. And when I say genuine interest, like on a phone call, uh, when we're talking to people, uh, listen actively. And somebody may be, you know, describing about some achievement. So normally you will say, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, great job done. Congratulations, et cetera, et cetera. And if you engage with the person and say, okay, great. How did you do that? I'm sure you must have, you know, done something differently. Now what you're giving a message is that you're actually listening to people and you're getting very uh, actively involved here. And uh, that is how, you know, you start uh, building the network, you start leveraging it, people get engaged. And we should not be in a hurry to tell what we want to tell. I mean, you must tell what you want to tell, but then give the other person the space to, uh, to kind of, you know, uh, let him explain himself, let him say what he wants to say. Uh, so, so that is one part of, of how do you go about networking. The other part is about, is about using the social media that, uh, that we use. But remember, not every platform is for everybody. You know, uh, for for each, uh, each platform is different. Well, like Facebook is different, Inter Instagram is different, so is Twitter and LinkedIn. Each has a different purpose. Uh, it is good not to put the same content everywhere. A Facebook content, uh, if you put on LinkedIn, may not be very appropriate or the other way around. So every platform has, has a particular purpose. And once you post your, uh, your content, it's there. It talks about you, about your thought leadership. People start forming perception. People start making images about you as to what kind of a person you are. So before posting, uh, please give it a thought that would you want to talk about a controversial topic? Would you want to take some political sides? Maybe if you need to, maybe if your job or business demands that, but please have a uh, thought behind it that is it really needed. Coming on to, you know, again, uh, personalizing, like in LinkedIn, there's an option where you just press the connect button. 
I just says connect, that's it. Now, when you're pressing the connect button, a request goes to the link and it says such and such person wants to connect. But the person on the other side doesn't know why you want to connect. If you personalize that, that connect message by saying, I have gone through your article, it's a wonderful article, this is what I learned from you, I want to connect to you to you know, continue the discussion. Now the person gets interested. Now you understand that you're engaging with him. And that is how you can personalize your messages. Uh, write your own messages. Don't go on the templated messages that are there on the social media platform. And that is how you can also show that you're actually uh, genuinely interested in, in engaging with people. And when you talk to people or interact with people, it's a good thing to actually keep noting down the conversation. It helps in building up the conversation at some point of time later when you again connect, you can say, okay, last time you know you were speaking on this and this, I did a little bit of research, I came out with this information, what do you think? I think it can be a great piece of information for you. And that is where uh, the intent uh, starts building up and that is where the connection starts maturing uh, nicely. So uh, start building your network, Identify what your target group or target audience is. Uh, create some great content on the LinkedIn. Uh, comment, share other articles, increase your engagement. Uh, show the intent when interacting with people. Choose which social media for what you need to you know, use for. And remember, connections are two-way nodes. I mean, that is how the connection is. So you have to engage and then the other person engages with you. And that is how you start you know, leveraging your, your network, okay? All right, so this is where we started off, you know, uh, that there's a roadmap for our careers. We are at different points in our careers. We are on a growth phase and it plateaus. We take steps to, you know, move forward. And there are times when we want safety as our first aspect and we are really focused on that. Then we again do something, we ask our mentors, how do we move forward? We do some upskilling and we keep on moving forward. However, there are times when there is a road bomb which happens, our car gets into a problem, or, or you know, there is a problem with the road, it breaks down. That is what we spoke about. How do you transition from that stage where this is not planned, something wrong has happened, and now you need to actually uh, go back to work. That was what we discussed today. And thank you for your time. Uh, this is what we do uh, when we actually do a one-to-one -one session uh, with individuals, uh, three sessions normally, and each of the session takes care of these three things. So thank you so much. And I would now want any questions that have left unanswered or any new question that might have come up. Thank you so much for your time. This was a... Absolutely brilliant session, Vimal. Loved some amazing tips that you've given, you know, network, 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 use social media with responsibility, create uh, personalized CVs for the jobs you want to apply. I think those were my biggest three take backs. Mm -hmm. One of the questions that came in uh, uh, from, the, from one of the uh, uh, audiences was, LinkedIn articles that demonstrate your ability, um, mm -hmm. you know, will it be treated as a clear case of looking for a job if I go out there and start making a lot of noise around that? Will it be seen as a clear case of job hunt? If you could please stop sharing your screen, I will pin you to... Yes, yes yeah. Hello. That's perfect. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Okay. You're seeing something. So I was just saying, if you could look at those articles and if you're, you know, mentioning something particularly, are we saying that we are job hunting very actively on LinkedIn? See, LinkedIn is actually not a portal, as I said in the beginning, to hunt for jobs. Uh, it, it starts with networking, it starts with uh, your thought leadership. And then in the process, uh, if you come across people who want to hire you, it's good. That is where the uh, inbound strategy happens. It's also an outbound strategy when you reach out to people. 
but through articles i don't know how people would reach out articles are primarily there on the linkedin to uh, showcase your thought leadership uh, to create your brand so if somebody is a is a say a sales manager or, or a marketing manager how what he thinks about marketing how he can develop marketing so put your thought leadership in the articles articles are not to be put uh, where it gives an indication that they look out for a job uh, once you establish a connect once you establish some form of network with a person you have had two or three interactions then maybe in the fourth interaction you can have a conversation around that you know i was looking for some opportunity what do you think now that we have an interaction now that you understand my profile what do you think you know it can be put in a very simple manner but linkedin these days also have a job tab where you can go into jobs and see what jobs are available for that so that is also a, a power of it great thank you Uh, another question that has come up is um, thank you for your insightful talk. Any tips right. when we are looking to shift sectors or vastly different roles from what we've played in the past? Yes, so uh, as I say, you know, uh, people, and this is true for people who have at least seven to ten years experience. I won't say so for people who have lesser experience. In our seven to ten years experience or beyond that, people normally develop competences which are beyond one. So normally they would have three or four competences around that. now which competence you want to bring to the forefront depends on how you want to play around so if i have been a production guy i also managed project management i also did uh, say for example new product introduction but if it was, that was in a distant past say 15 years back then it would become a little difficult uh, but you can find similarity so people who have been in the production domain and who handle a large team can also look for a job which Uh, which is similar to handling large team like for example i give a very typical example of e-commerce the flipkart and amazons of the day they have lot of people who have handled large teams irrespective of uh, which sector it is so you have to then make a resume accordingly and and and, and highlight that part of the resume okay fantastic Uh, there was a question earlier which said, "How can I stay mentally involved and challenged during my transition?" Great question. Uh, the biggest way to remain involved is that the process that I spoke about. If you follow this process, it it takes almost six to eight hours a day consistently. Because if I give you a simple uh, homework to do and say, enlist twenty uh, five companies that you want to work. Now that itself is a job because you need to first find you you just can't have you know only companies who you want to work with because that's a desire you want to list out companies where the probability of getting is very high so you may want to list you know the Nestle and the Pepsi Co's and the Coca Cola of the world but we know you know these companies are not hiring because they're actually de hiring so what do you do so you start you know doing research and find out which are the top most growing companies in India today. and you come up with list of say 80 100 companies which are growing in india say 18 20% now out of those 18 20 you know 100 companies which are going 18 20% which are the companies that suit to your kind of work i mean you can't go to a software engineering company if you are a production guy or you can't go to a production company if you are a software guy so if you start doing that it, it itself is a big big job then you start finding out who are the new entrants in in the business who are the companies who want to enter india etc etc so is if you go into this if you remain focused on what you're doing and then you start making resume as i said you know resume making itself is a big uh, job you would like your bio executive biography then you try to find out what are your competencies which competency do you want to bring forward which is not and then the linkedin i think you can remain absolutely engaged and you will have no mental space to think about what you're worried about if you have the right intent if you have followed this process once the process is followed the delivery is going to happen I and mean, that is how i can tell you you can remain focused and and not worry too much fantastic thank you for that tip uh, mimol another question in the chat box how endorsement in linkedin from seniors or colleagues can help okay so there has to be a little bit of caution uh, what i have seen people getting endorsement is suddenly in one month there are 10 endorsement okay it's a clear cut uh, indication that you have asked for endorsement only when you need it the endorsement has to be uh, you know kind of distributed or spread across 
a time zone, say for example, a year or two at some regular intervals, and that too from different people, uh, not only from your organization. If you work in five different organizations, you have to from five different uh, people from five different organizations. So what, and that should also speak similar things. So if you are like, again, coming back to the personal branding thing. So if you are if you're wanting to brand yourself as a person who is good in people management, all these endorsements should actually be talking about your people management. If you are a person who is into continuous improvement, you're doing work on Lean Six Sigma, et cetera, et cetera, all these four or five people should be talking about the same subject. So you decide, you talk to people and find out what endorsement you want. But it helps, yes. Answering it in a short, it helps, for sure. Right. Uh how do how to motivate your contacts to put you on top of their to-do priority list? A bit delicate to keep reminding your network that you exist and they're looking for you know a next challenge. So what is that subtle way of letting your network know we are looking for something? See, uh, again, it's like building up brick by brick. It doesn't happen in a day. So uh, once you start engaging with people, and as, as I said, engaging is something which is delicate. You have to respond, react, uh, talk to people on, on similar topics. Uh, and then uh, you actually put forward a case of yourself and say, you know, I have not been, I'm just one example and thing. What do you think uh, is the current uh, job opportunities in market? How do you see today's market? Uh, I have also been thinking you know, to see what can be done you put in a very subtle way and then you see how the contact is responding or not responding at all. I and mean, you really don't want to push somebody. The, the intent is that you create your visibility, you create your importance so that the person wants to ask you, look, I'm looking for somebody, who do you want to join us? If you can create that kind of importance and that kind of branding, uh, it happens automatically. So that is what LinkedIn allows you, allows you to do. And that's what I was calling inbound traffic where people are contacting you rather you contacting people. Right. This is a, this is a great uh, tip, Vimal. Uh, would like to invite the audience for one last question before we close for today. Anyone for one question? <laughs> are you hiring? <laughs> yes, we are hiring interns. <laughs> yeah, so we are a startup. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question, but well, we've got to get paid. <laughs> this is a question that comes in. What is the importance of cover letter apart oh, from wow. resume? I was waiting for this, actually. This is a wonderful question. I mean, I remember those days, you know, almost 20 years back when people used to send applications in envelopes, not on emails, and there used to be a compulsory cover letter, and that was a need. These days, what people do, uh, they just click the apply button. Although there is an option to send cover letters, but people are lazy, I would say they don't do that. Extremely, extremely important. And I give you an example here. People normally write in the cover letters for a suitable opportunity in your organization. Now, this is a very dangerous statement. If you are putting the onus on the other person to find a suitable opportunity in their organization, you have to be a really, really a big brand to do that. I mean, it's like Amitabh Bachchan asking somebody for a suitable opportunity in their organization. You have to create that opportunity for yourself in the organization and say, that look, I am suitable for your organization for such and such rules because you are growing, you want profitability. I read an article, you know, we are coming up with a new product. And I think with my experience of new product, uh, you know, introduction or with, you know, growth that I have given to my organization, it can be best fit for the company. Yes, cover letters are extremely important provided they are properly written and customized. Thank you, Vimal. On that note, uh, we will be, we are slowly coming to uh, the closure of this uh, session. Our mm -hmm. next session is on 18th of September, uh, which is a guest speaker, Mr. Suresh 
uh, Anubolu. He's the CHRO and senior vice president at the Argan Life Sciences. Argan Life Sciences is about a thousand crore company in, and spends most of its money in drug research. Join us on the 18th of September as we unfurl further what transition means to a CHRO, what transition means to acquire and merge, what transition means post COVID. Uh, it would be an amazing session from what I can foresee with all the experience that Suresh has. He's also a coach he, and, um, and his HR background is definitely going to give us a lot of um, insightful thoughts and ideas. There are lots of thank you messages coming in. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I think it was a brilliant session. Thank you, Vimal, for giving us some very, very- Thanks, thanks everybody. Thanks, Anjani. Take care, all of you. See thank you, you very much. Shabakher, good night. Namaste. Bye -bye. See you soon. All the best.